your feet. Let's sing by gosh for a great win. Great win. Good job. We talked about we talked about being having a four-game season left. You got two down. Don't worry about the next two. Worry about the next one. Focus on what you got to do. But man, I tell you what, it's a great win. Tough win against a good football team. You did what you had to do. A lot of people did really well. A lot of people did really well to contribute. It's time for the Philip Fulmer Show with your host, the head football coach at the University of Tennessee, Philip Fulmer, and the voice of the Vols, John Ward. Brought to you each week by State Farm Insurance and the State Farm agent throughout Tennessee. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By First Tennessee Bank. For all your financial needs, bank with the best in the field. First Tennessee Bank, here for you. By your East Tennessee Ford dealers, where you'll find quality people, quality products throughout East Tennessee. By Eastman Chemical Company, reminding you that good sports always recycle. By RC Cola and Diet Right, the official soft drinks of the Vols. By Tennessee's natural gas utilities and pipeline companies. Natural gas. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, who remind you friends know when to say when. The weather in Knoxville was football perfect as Memphis came to Tennessee to play. Memphis had won five of its last six games, two and one against Southeastern Conference opponents. When it was over, over 94,000 fans saw the Volunteers win 24 to 13. Key plays in the game. John, I think probably the reverse, the punt, re well, actually, the first punt return, a super effort by Nilo Sylvan to get us in a scoring position and set a tempo early. After uh, Memphis University gained some momentum, the reverse on the punt. So the kicking game did make a difference, as it always does in close games. Always starts with a kicking game, and this game it ended there, too, really. Exactly, and, and, uh, and our defensive effort in the second half was outstanding. I think it held them to 69 yards. There are many big plays in this football game, and we'll be seeing them all coming up right here on the Philip Fulmer Show. Well, I think uh, Coach Fulmer has a good saying about that one, which I do remember this time, as, as someone who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. And that just means somebody who knows you know, what, what right, what the difference between right and wrong, then he's able to do you know, the right thing in each situation. And then he's also able to show others, you know, this is the right path to take. I think that's uh, what defines a leader, you know, in any spectrum of life, you know, that's what you have to have, somebody who can do those three things. Where'd you get that for? In Knoxville, after an open date, which really was a blessing for Tennessee. A uh, great blessing for Tennessee. With some people, Tally, Steve White, uh, Shane Burton, Leland Taylor, Ray Austin probably wouldn't have played if we'd have played last week, and don't think we weren't concerned. So Tennessee wins the opening toss. He likes to defer. The Volunteers will be kicking off, and Memphis will be receiving. Memphis wearing the white jerseys with blue numerals. Tennessee in the home orange with white football fans. And here's the kickoff coming downfield, and it will be the return by Memphis upfield after uh, a penalty did occur on the play. And so it will be Memphis, as you see, at the 12-yard line. The quarterback is Bordich, Joe Bordich, throwing deep the pass, incomplete. To tell you more about it, the coach of the Volunteers, Philip Fulmer. Went after our freshman cornerback, Kerry Fair, there right off the bat. Gosh, we almost had a safety right here. Good play, good pressure. On the opening kickoff, that was Ronnie Pillow tack, uh, from Columbia, Tennessee, making the tackle. Has done a good job. That's one of the areas that we need to to improve right there, just closing the deal on, on sacks. We've been so close during the course of the year, and hopefully we can continue to improve that. Third down, 15, carrying the ball will be Quitman Spalding, because and Memphis, of course, has had some injury problems at tailback as well. And so here will be the punt. It's by Paramore upfield, and this will be Nilo Sylvan. Looks like he's going to be stopped right here, but he isn't. Looks like he's going to be stopped here, but he isn't. Here, but he isn't. Here, but he isn't. And here he breaks it. Just an outstanding effort on Nilo's part. Uh, an excellent job of people picking up some blockers. And right there, Steve uh, Johnson just picks it up. And we, we get it in. I'm really disappointed for Nilo that he didn't get it in. But uh, we celebrate a little bit too soon right there. The goal line is five yards further downfield. Let's take another look at the outstanding effort by Nilo Sylvan. You can see him picking up some people here as he breaks. Just a super effort again of people better wrap Nilo up. He's very strong for his size, and obviously he's got outstanding speed. And you can see him beating the punter right there. 
turning the corner and uh, just a freshman learning another lesson, I think, right here at the five-yard line. If we turn and block for him, we go ahead and have this touchdown. As it is, Tennessee will have the ball first down, goal to go at the one-yard line. Nothing, nothing to score. This will be James Stewart. Touchdown, Big R. Really good push by the up-front people on the left side. Jason Lehman, Kevin May. Uh, uh, you see, I can't tell if it's Scott Pfeiffer or David Horn on that side. And then Moe Phillips cleaning it up in there and patented James Stewart right there, John. His ninth rushing touchdown of the year. He has three catching passes, and he has passed for one himself as Tennessee opens up a 7-0 lead with the extra point by Bexford, and it will be Bexford kicking off again. These guys were very dangerous on, in all phases of the kicking game, and it was exciting to see us improve in the kicking game. Somebody taking a shot right there, and then you see how hard they hit the the kickoff. That's excellent coverage. That was Davis making the return. First down 10 at the 24 for the Tigers. Defensively, we've got a lot of people close to the line of scrimmage trying to stop the running game, which I think we did a good job and a much better job in the second half. Fletcher for one, knocked down by Hines. Good Fletcher job. tackled again by Hines after a two-yard game. I don't know how many plays Tyrone actually made during the course of the game. We'll have to see the film, but he was all over the place, and it's exciting to see that. Good Warwick press. Sack. Shane Burton, good pressure from the inside out. You can see a Memphis, uh, Memphis native Corey Stone right there. Probably had his best game since he's been at Tennessee. Was good. True freshman uh, Jonathan Brown close. Jonathan from Tulsa, Oklahoma has done an excellent job for us during the course of the year. So Memphis unable to move with the ball. On fourth down, Paramore is on to punt again. The Volunteers lead. The Tigers 7 0. The punt. Again, we'll take all those we can get. Certainly, uh, he had a tough day on, in, in his punting, and when he did get it to us, we were able to return the ball. Tennessee unable to move with the ball against the nation's number two defense. That's Memphis, as the punt will come downfield by Hutton, and it soars into the end zone. Another Memphian who had a very good football game. Had an outstanding game. A lot of phases of the kicking game just really paid off, played off for us. This will be Dawkins. Gosh, dog. Had two opportunities to pick it up and scoop it, and big play in the ball game. I'm, I'm glad we caused the turnover. Now we just need to pick it up and make something happen. Ross Kelly was the man who recovers the bobble for Memphis, so it will be Spalding this time. No gain on the play. Third down, 12 yards to go. So there's not much running room inside there, and that's that's good. That was part of the plan. Interception opportunity here, and that coming, he comes up for the catch. Ross Kelly, some kind of football player. Good player, really good player. Guy that's made a lot of plays for him during the course of the year. Off tackle play, you can see our safety showing up there. We need to make sure we wrap that guy up. He did a nice job. Tyron Hines making another play. That was Jones, who had come on a tailback, outstanding running back from the state of Florida. Hey, they had some big backs that ran hard and had good speed, and, uh, and I was real proud of our defensive effort. Tennessee leads 7-0. Memphis has moved downfield after that pass. You see, again, inside-out pressure there is a uh, good good coverage. I'm glad he was, uh, was out of bounds. Steve Johnson, a true freshman in there defending, and our defense was able to hold him, and then they missed the field goal. The field goal try by Tejeda, who came into the game 8 of 9, his long 52. This one off to the left. Scott, so Tennessee will get the football. I believe Scott Gallion might have gotten very a piece well. of that. Could I, very I, well have. You have to see the film. That is a great job of the right side of picking up the pressure and then Mose Phillips picking up the scraping linebacker to give James Stewart, who had a good game. 15 well carries, 94 yards for Stewart, and here's a second look at this run. One of the things that we had to do going into the ball game, you know, Memphis being the, the uh, rated number two in the country in defense, was to handle the front people. And I thought our offensive line did an exceptional job during the course of the ball game of doing that. And so Tennessee leads at the end of the first quarter by a score of seven to nothing. We'll be seeing the second period, the Tennessee Volunteers and the Memphis Tigers in just a moment. Well, the tradition that I think of as far as Tennessee, which is probably the NFL, and you look at the guys that came through here, if you can be good here, you can play on Sundays. You know, I mean, that's what everybody wants to do. I mean, we want our degrees and things like that, but you want to make it to the league, too. And coming to Tennessee, that tradition makes you play better because you want to be Reggie Cobb. You want to be Chuck Webb going pro, Carl Pickens. You turn on Sundays, you want to see somebody from Tennessee playing. And that means a lot to me, because that's where I want to be.
The Philip Fulmer Show is being brought to you by Infinity. It's everything that's possible. By Golden Flake Snack Foods. Great taste since 1923. By Aztecs, your convenience store for quality products and value prices every day. And by Castrol GTX, the motor oil that provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. Tennessee plays Memphis, a game in which the kicking game was absolutely key to Tennessee's victory. A punt by Tom Hutton has been downed by Kendrick Jones just inside the one-yard line of Memphis as we pick up the action in the second quarter of this football game with the Volunteers currently leading by a score of 7 to nothing. And here to tell you about it more, this is Philip Fulman. This is where you like for them to start. Backed up as far <laughs> as you can get them and know that you got a chance to have outstanding field position. Kendrick Jones from Memphis, Tom Hutton from Memphis. Both those guys are doing a great job to get the ball in this position. Defense doing a good job of holding. Uh, almost let them cut back there, but you see a lot of people around the football. It's third down and three at the eight. Tennessee leads seven nothing. Memphis deep in its own territory, and the Volunteers stop the run by Dawkins for no gain. That's a difficult place to run your offense from, and then uh, you see good pressure from Steve uh, Johnson from the outside there to force a quick punt. Milo Sylvan getting the punt and picking up the wall and getting a set up in good field position for offense to, offense to start. So it all started with the punt by Hutton, Tennessee, with excellent field position at the 39 first down. We had good field position most of the day. Oftentimes didn't take advantage of like we want to. That's uh, Peyton Manning to Billy Williams trying to get the ball on the perimeter a little bit. Uh, trying to throw a crossing route here. Memphis chose to defend. Uh, we were in a good spread out formation for, for Peyton to see the See the defense. Third down, 12. Tennessee leading 7 nothing pass. Complete. That's Joey Kent. Nice throw and catch. Joey Kent from Huntsville. And just did you know, a nice job on the corner route and Peyton, Peyton picking him up. Nice throw. So Tennessee does get the first down at the 23-yard line. Leading 7 nothing. Back to the old patented three-step game. Joey Kent again moving the ball toward the, uh, toward the goal line. That's what we want. Second down, 3 at the 16. And here will be Aaron Hayden. Aaron had a, just an outstanding day again, running better and better, uh, holding the football uh, very well. And 12-yard uh, pickup there. He's 21 for 129 for the ball game. This will be Hayden again for a three-yard pickup, still to get his first touchdown this year. Believe Is that right? I, I didn't not know that. A touchdown. We'll to to but here's it. one, and it's scored by Mose Phillips. Look at Jason Lehman driving the defender into the end zone. That's just super. Jason Lehman, uh, again, Kevin May's side. David Horn. Here's the second look, and watch that offensive line go to work. Well, that's, yeah, that's great. That's, that's true. I knew he got in awful easy, but I, I knew something good had to happen up front, but I didn't know it was that good. There this will go. be Bexford on for the extra point, which is up and good. And Tennessee leads in the second quarter with 10.53 to go in the first half by a score of 14-0. And then they're on the off tackle play, and they get a little room, running room, and cut it back there. Somebody in the secondary has to come up and make the play. But number ten is Jones, who's had an outstanding game. He hit it hard too. What part of Florida is he from? We might need to check in there. Uh, he, <laughs> he's from Memphis right now, and he picks up a first down at the 26-yard line. We should have known about him. Same play action. They're coming out with a naked and good job. True freshman Jonathan Brown there to make the play. His second sack of the year first in this football game. Let's take a second look. As Tennessee leads 14 and I think it's just a gorgeous day. This is this is a naked tight play that they're trying to suck the defensive in on the fake and uh, good must have been good coverage to let, allow Jonathan to react back and, and make the play. They uh, come back here. This is a tough play. When they called the timeout, went to the sideline, we thought something special was coming up. It's kind of a throwback screen, a middle screen almost. A good play by them to get the first down. The pass was complete to Powell for a 15-yard gain. It's third down in a yard, and here is the first down. And they come back with the reverse. Our cornerback was up there to make a play, did not make it. Again, you see Tyron Hines out there. Jesus, he's all over the place. That's great. Hines makes the tackle there. It's second down and two at the 44, nearing the end of the first half. This was a great drive for them to, to get the to get the score, and I and I didn't like it, uh, the the momentum that had changed. Leland Taylor blocking the ball there. We need to try to pick that thing off if we can. Let's take a second look at the play as Boric is about looking. 57 really into good. the air and blocking it. We've really been getting a good push. Uh, Coach Dan Brooks does a good job of working on that, and our, our, our pass rush has improved during the course of the year. Here's Quitman Spalding. 
Christmas from Winchester, Tennessee, That's my correct. hometown. Exactly. I you know, I like him doing that against us. <laughs> Ten-yard gain by Spalding. It's first and ten at the 41. Good this cut. pass intended for Rutledge incomplete. That was a high-low route, and our cornerback defended very well, and Jason Parker coming over as a safety doing well. Tennessee leads 14-0. This was the darnest drive. Well, I thought we had the interception here, and they, they took it away. Well, they, they must have skipped. I think it probably did skip. Yeah, John, what did you say? I didn't. I don't remember what I said. Whatever you said is probably right. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> well, Good. Jenkins thinks he had the interception, but not so, and so it'll be third down and 10. What I was going to say is these guys made about four plays in this drive and uh, to, to keep it alive, and then we helped them a little bit. I'm, this was called interference. This is, I'm be anxious to watch this as well. And it was interference probably by Duran. So there's the penalty against Tennessee, and it will make it first down and 10 at the 26-yard line. The Actually, volunteers lead 14-0. Actually, that was Terry Fair, wasn't it? Yes. And this was not good. Jason, uh, no, uh, Jesse Sanders slipped down in the coverage of this on this particular play. We had it played perfectly, and then and his footing, he just lost his footing. You see, again, uh, Tyron Hines scraping off and put the pressure on Spalding making the play in the flat. So Memphis threatening. They come to the spin around with Jones caught, pulled down. Who else? Exactly. Good job, Tyron. Gave Tyron a game ball, John, after this game. I, the guy was all over the place. Yeah, Outstanding the performance by Brownsville, Tennessee's Tyrone Hines. Outstanding play. Tennessee leads 14 to nothing, but Memphis, deep in Tennessee territory, an 82-yard drive pass is incomplete. Good pressure by Sean Summers. Good play by Scott Gay and getting the ball out of there. And, and an outstanding job of the defensive team of of holding them to the field goal would much rather them not have gotten down there to, at all to to set up the field goal but a couple of plays and they, they're on scholarship too and they did a good job <laughs> so Tejeda got it uh, the field goal up and the first half comes to a close with the volunteers leading 14 to 3 more to come in just a moment Because once you make the big play then, you're going to feel like you're going to make another one. One of the biggest additions to the Tennessee defense this year, middle linebacker Tyrone Hines. A vicious hitter and an active linebacker, Hines has given the defense a spark. Oh, it's great. Uh, you already hyped up anyway, and uh, you make a big play, it's just... <laughs> It's just a whole nother level of football game. A defensive end at Haywood County High School in Brownsville, Hines was a risk because of his size and his grades coming out of high school. But Tyrone never gave up on his dream of playing in Tennessee, and Tennessee never gave up on Tyrone Hines. And I worked out well. Tennessee took me in as a prop 48, and I thank him for that. And uh, I tried to just go out, you know, and show the coach that they made the right decision. The biggest thing Tyrone Hines has learned is that he still has a lot to learn about playing middle linebacker. I felt it was kind of hard for him because I just thought football was all about just tackling and catching the ball, but it's a lot more to it. One of the highlights this year, the Arkansas game, when he picked up a fumble and rumbled for the score. It, it, it was kind of, I, I felt like it was luck at first because uh, the ball kept, kept bouncing around the field and I was the closest one to it. And I haven't like I was like, because I didn't know if the ball was down or not, so I just ran, just picked the ball up and started running. With it. Tennessee has had a proud tradition of great linebackers, from Steve Kiner to Paul Newmoff to Keith DeLong. Tyrone Hines is learning what it takes to be a great linebacker. Hines is working hard to be a great one for Tennessee. For the Philip Fulmer Show, I'm Bob Kessling. That is a great feature, and it couldn't come at a more opportune time for Tyrone Hines. Tyrone has made a difference in our football team. The Brownsville native, uh, just uh, I know all the people in West Tennessee are just really happy about him, but most of all, Tyrone's a great person and a hard worker and a very dedicated volunteer, and we appreciate him a lot. The Volunteers lead at halftime by a score of 14-3. to 3. Lots of things about to happen. We'll be showing them to you in just a moment. <laughs> The 
The Philip Fulmer Show is being brought to you by Kelso Oil Company, Tennessee's largest multi-line distributor. By Rocky Top Views, Tennessee's best sports publication. By East Tennessee's free service tire and auto centers. There's a value every day at free service tire and auto. And by St. Mary's Health System. Almost 95,000 fans are at Neyland Stadium, a lot of them from Memphis cheering on the Tigers, and we're set to pick up action as the second half gets underway, and it will be Tennessee receiving the kickoff as the Volunteers lead by a score of 14-3. You see the blue sky in the background, it was a beautiful day, and you'll see the shadows extending over the field as well as Tennessee returns the ball, and this will be Peyton Manning, number 16 at quarterback. John, I told the guys at halftime that I just, I didn't have a great feel for where we were and that we needed to go ahead and not let Memphis hang around and, and stay in this ball game because we'd actually beaten Arkansas and Ole Miss by doing that very thing this year. And uh, we come out in the first half, uh, we've got a first down or two here and then we turned the ball over and that wasn't exactly what you looked Manning for. Manning looks to throw and does throw, intercepted Memphis. Peyton's trying to make a play, and I understand that, but he also knows in that particular pass play, we need to throw it away and play the next down. So there you'll see the replay as Manning was looking to his left. The intended receiver covered, comes back intending it to Kendrick Jones, who's from Collierville. Memphis is near Collierville. That's right. Let's give them credit. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and this will be Memphis carrying the ball. It will be Jones, and Memphis has it first down, trailing 14-3. Again, our, that's a little naked play, and our defensive end playing it well, and our secondary playing it well, linebacker. Third down, seven at the 34. Draw play, we certainly had uh, some trouble with the draw it from time to time during the course of the season. We played that one well, and we pulled up a yard short. So Spalding is injured on the play, and Memphis will go for the first down, and it's Jones who pops through there, and it will be first down 10 at the 25. Looked like initially we had it pretty in pretty good shape right there. Again, a lot of orange around the, the football and the running game, that's, that's good. We had to stop Memphis's running game. It's 14-3, but Memphis is threatening. Good pressure there, making him throw it up and over, and good coverage as well. Third and seven at the 22. Orange escapes, passes complete. That's Powell with the catch. Three or four plays like that and during the course of the ball game, and it scared you to death because you never could just quite close the door. First down and 10 at the 11. This will be Jones, and there's a penalty against the Volunteers, and it will move the ball inside the five. Here's Jones again. George Kidd there to make a play from the outside in. That's good. We, I think we ended up... Uh, First down goal, and there's the Button dive. In. Touchdown for the Tigers. We're going to go on front. There should be somebody filling that particular gap. And I'm uh, not sure just exactly what happened. Looks like Craig King's up and over, and George Kidd's there. They didn't block them both. So it is now 14 to 9, and the extra point will make it a four-point game. So the Volunteers, who had led 14 0, Memphis scores on its final possession in the first half and on its first possession in the second half. It's a 14-10 game. It's an outstanding kickoff for them. They hung it high and allowed their coverage to get down there. One of the things we wanted to do was make sure we improved in the kicking and return game. We did that in the punt return. We did not do that in the kickoff return. I think we've really got to evaluate what we're doing and, and get better at it. First down as Manning intends his pass for Joan. It is Jones incomplete. Second down 10 at the 29-yard uh, line. This guy know what, he knows what to do with it. <laughs> For Jerome Woods, that's a good tackle by him. Good job by a uh, by little man of getting it up in there and holding the football. Third down and two. Pass complete, Mose Phillips. Just a super catch by Mose. Uh, he's, he just got the first down. He uh, caught it over his shoulder and held on it long enough. Back to Mose again. And good, a good job of them supporting. We just wanted to protect the quarterbacks as much as we could against their outstanding defense. and and make the throws as easy as possible. Second and seven at the 47 as Hayden is stopped by Bonner for no gain. It's third down seven at the 47-yard line. They forgot to cover this guy. <laughs> That's the darnest thing. Absolutely right. wide open. Nobody near him. And so here is Hutton to punt. And here comes Memphis. And it is blocked. That's Cobb blocking. Rutledge recovers and pins the ball. And it will be... 
first down 10, Memphis at the Volunteer 33. We really have to study this. We have been so good this year at protecting the quarterback and our coverage teams and everything. This is We had a chance to turn field position over there, if not go and score with the football. And now they've got the momentum and they've got the, uh, the field position. And our defense does a great job of holding them to three points here. It's 14-10, Memphis beginning at the 33-yard line, Jones for three, second down and seven. We'll counterplay a lot of orange shirts around the football, and that's, that's what you're looking for. So a loss actually will make it third down and nine at the 32. Big play here. Good job. Who else, right? Tyrone Hines is there. So here is Tejeda to attempt a 50-yard field goal. This youngster walked on into a place, and I think he's hit a 52 and a 50 this year. We knew he could kick the ball. There you see it going through the uprights, and so from 14-3 at halftime, it is now 14-13, Tennessee by one, with 6.25 to go in the third quarter. I think our team responded uh, at this point. So this, this is not a game that we need to mess with, and, and, we, and we did get better from this point on. The quarterback is Brandon Stewart. This is Aaron Hayden. Good job, one of the safety up there making the play. When the safety's up there making the play, I hope in the future we can continue to take advantage in the passing game because you just can't block them all. Second down and five, and there's Hayden again, who now has amassed 1,811 yards in his career at Tennessee. Ninth on the list, but moving up quickly. First down at the 22. He knows what to do with the football. That's just an outstanding run, good blocking up front and getting him into the secondary and then him moving it. We, we try to tell our guys that if you, we'll, we'll get you four and you get four more. And A second look at this run to the outside by Hayden, picking his spots and banging forward for eight yards. Second down and two. The Volunteers moving on the ground and this is Aaron Hayden again. Fourth straight carry. He went for six, for eight, for six this time for six yards, and the Volunteers have it first and 10 of the 36. I think the offensive line's taking control of the football game better at this point. And thought we had that in the first half. Fullback play almost coming out of it really good. Mo's Phillips. Five carries, 17 yards in the game for Phillips. That good for seven. Tennessee second down and three. Getting it back to Mr. Hayden. This, was, this is a great drive by our football team and a very, very important drive. Brandon Stewart looking to throw. Pass long downfield is incomplete. Intended for Billy Williams. I kind of feel like the fans do. They <laughs> wanted to boo that They're one. expressing themselves here. <laughs> That's as it should be. Pass intended to Ronnie Pillow overthrown, so it's third down and ten. Their, their secondary was, was good. You know, uh, their front people were good. They just did an outstanding job all the way around. Going to blitz read here. That's Jones on the reception, and Memphis used a lot of different movements and so forth defensively. Trying to give lots of problems, and the front people, I think, handled it well, the offensive line, but this, the, the young quarterback seeing all that, just, they're just not quite ready for the great coverage. Mark Collin down there making the play. I think With Lane. Uh, Eric Lane. Eric Lane has been so consistent this year and, or, and, and done a great job, really, on all the special teams. And, Wish we, got, wish we could play him more. Need to play him more. That was Jones, who was met and stopped by White, another Memphian, minus one. Second down, 11 at the 14. Tyron Hines again making the play. Sean Summers, uh, or no, that's Jesse Sanders up there to make the play. Davis carrying as Memphis has lost some players in the game with injuries, particularly at the tailback position. Good There's coverage. the pass incomplete intended for Anderson. So it's fourth down and 11. And here's the punt by Paramore, and Sean Summers is back for Tennessee to make the catch. Starts to the near sideline, hands it off to Nilo Silver. Outstanding job of executing the reverse part of it. A lot of people out there in front of him blocking for him. I thought he was going to have another score here. Nilo, Nilo snake bit a little bit in that ball game. He's not getting the points, but we turned field position over there. Our defense did a great job of stopping them, and we took advantage of the kicking game, which we have made, a, made good progress in that. Nilo is got the speed that can can turn the corner and, and does an outstanding job of running. He has returned in this game four punts for 136 yards. And the Volunteers have it first and 10 at the 12. You know, it's, you know the old saying, you, you are what you think about. And, and I think Nilo's been thinking about getting a, having a day like this as a, as a 
Yeah, punt return. Brandon Stewart completes the pass to tight end Horn. It's second down and three at the five. And here is Mose Phillips. Touchdown, Tennessee. Again, an outstanding job. A great call by David Cuff of one. And an outstanding job of the front people of Hanlon. When the running back and going to the end zone untouched from the five-yard line, some good things are happening. And that's, that's very good. The extra point by Bexford is up and good. And so Tennessee which led 14-3 at halftime, saw it trimmed to 14-13, now leading by a score of 21-13. We'll see the final quarter of the Tennessee-Memphis game coming up in a moment. I've had a great experience here, and I'd love to play for another four years. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just so excited that I came to, to school and played football for Tennessee. You know, I have no regrets. And, you know, to anybody else that, that's thinking about coming to Tennessee, it's, you know, it's the greatest place I've you know, ever been associated with. Uh, Bud's dad is Nilo Sylvan. A single game record for punt returns, 136 yards. Old record, 135, set by Burt Richishar in 1950. Tennessee leads by a score of 21-13. Memphis has made a lot of things happen all year long in the fourth quarter. We pick it up now as the Volunteers are on defense, and it will be Paramore who gets this punt away. And once more, this will be Sylvan. Again, you can see we've got field position. Uh, Heath Smardesco setting up a block there. I think that was Kendrick Jones making a block. Uh, picked up the wall really well. Field position is the key to that and having a chance to get the ball out that round mid midfield. I know these kids are excited about uh, the work that they put into the, to the punt return finally paying off. The special teams making the difference in this football game there. It, that was, in fact, Jones, as you anticipated, making the block. And there's the return by Nilo Sylvan. And it will be first and 10 for Chelsea at the 16-yard line. Kendrick hit him like a linebacker. Absolutely. He might be playing in the <laughs> wrong spot. <laughs> Brandon Stewart. James Stewart. No game. James got beat up a little bit in this ball game. Didn't get a chance to play a lot in the fourth quarter. And, uh, and I think he had three or four carries. I hope he's okay. I think he will be. We, uh, we were not going to take a chance uh, at all with, with the ball here in this with a young quarterback sometime if it's real a minute and we were going to just make sure that we got the ball to the middle of the field almost came out of it with a first down that, that would have made us uh, in good shape but uh, we were going to kick the field goal here here's the try by john bexford 27 yards it is up and it is good so bexford is 8 of 15 on the year he has kicked 145 consecutive points after touchdowns and this gives Tennessee an 11 point advantage 11 points was big you know the eight points uh, I don't, it would have taken a touchdown and, and a, i didn't like this at all either Great, Great return by Memphis. Good job by John of getting him out of bounds. There. Bexford blocks him out of bounds. Yeah. So eight points uh, was not a comfortable, comfortable margin. 11 points you feel better about. And then they come right back after us. Good job of Duran of being there to make the play. And uh, they, they didn't hesitate to go after our cornerbacks. They caught us in quite a bit of man-to-man -man as you see that many people close to the line of scrimmage. There's the pass across the middle. Pulled down by Rutledge for 19 yards. Down to the Volunteer 25-yard line. Tennessee leads by 11. Key play right here. Boric back to look. Waiting. Being Good. pressured. Sacked. Good job. Steve White. Again, another Memphis guy making a play from the backside. That is just sheer effort right there because he's really washed around the quarterback and he keeps coming. Young guys out there that might be watching this, a second effort is what makes an outstanding football player. Everybody's going to try and uh, give a first effort, but the second effort is what you're looking for. So the Volunteers win the football game by a score of 24 to 13. Tennessee now 5 and 4. Memphis is 6 and 4. And we'll be looking ahead to what's coming up for both these fine schools in just a moment. The Fulmer Show is being brought to you by Infinity. It's everything that's possible. By Golden Flake Snack Foods. Great taste since 1923. By Aztecs, your convenience store for quality products and value prices every day. And by Castrol GTX, the motor oil that provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. 
I'm Condridge Holloway in the locker room with Aaron Hayden. And, uh, Aaron, you've got to be particularly happy about the way you've run the ball the last three or four weeks. You've really run hard and been very productive. Well, uh, you know, I worked with Coach Stuckey this summer, and, uh, you know, I feel that acceleration that I worked all summer for. And it's, it's coming to light now. The offensive line is giving me a chance to show that. You know, I've had it all season, but now we're really starting to click, and I'm getting the holes, and I'm able to hit them. Watching film this week, you had to get excited about the weight differential between the Tennessee offensive line and their defensive line. You knew running game was going to be a big part of this play. Yeah, I knew this was going, that was going to be a big factor in the game. Plus, you know, they were the number two defense in the country, and uh, our offensive line took the challenge. You know, we worked hard all week on the little jumping and the different things they try to confuse you with, and the offensive line did a great job today. They did a lot of stunning out in the middle of the field, but once you got them in situations where they had to kind of hunker down and play, we just kind of blew them off the line. Exactly, exactly. We had a good plan, and uh, obviously the line, uh, the line did a good job of picking up the right guys, and uh, Aaron, the little man, ran hard, and so did Mose, and uh, helped us move the ball down the field. Well, going into the game, you had to know that Memphis State's forte was their defense, and the opportunity to make plays on special teams for Tennessee was was there to be had today. Yeah, Coach Puma really stressed uh, the kicking game this week. You know, we worked really hard on it, and Memphis State punt, punt, uh, punt team, you know, they had a weakness in their punt team on the left side, so we worked on that real hard. And we knew, you know, if we get a blocking, it would be some real good punt returns today. So what rallied the defense in that last fourth quarter where you guys played well all game, but you just went to another level there after a little while. It was like you took the onus on yourselves to make this game not be a loss. Yeah, you know, going into the ball game, you know, we know that they had a real good defense. And, uh, you know, when first or second, second leading defense in the country, we knew it. In, I mean, we had to play their offense, but it's more a defensive ball game. And uh, we knew that, that we had to go out and, and set the tone that fourth quarter because we had the lead and we, need, we, didn't have to, we didn't need to give it up. Because, uh, you know, earlier in the year, you know, we'd come, we'd come close to winning ball game, giving up even on the last play of the game. And, uh, and you know, we just didn't want to do that. We stayed hungry. And, and I think it was right, you know, that fourth quarter, we really, really turned up a notch. Uh, Tyrone was out there talking a lot, and Leland Taylor, and defensive line, they came through with some big plays and uh, second the quarterback. And I think it was just a great team effort. We'll be right back with more of the Philip Fulmer Show after this. Score of 24 to 13. An honor, a pleasure to have with us one of the outstanding volunteer players, Bubba Miller, and Coach Fulmer. He does a job for you in that offensive he line. He absolutely does, and I appreciate him coming here this morning, taking his Sunday morning. Bubba's an outstanding person. He knows what I think of him as a, as a student and as an athlete and as a leader and a community uh, service young man that spent a lot of time. We're just grateful. My, his senior year, I had a chance to recruit him, Jeff Smith, and Jason Lehman in the same year. Gosh, what a difference they've made in our football program. But what do you want to do with your career? What are you looking for down the road? Well, I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed my time here at the University of Tennessee. We've got one more year, don't have we? Another, have another year coming <laughs> back, but uh, hopefully I'd, you know, I'd like to extend my career beyond you know, University of Tennessee. And uh, I think that opportunity playing here in a program uh, with so many resources, I think that opportunity would be there for me. You're talking about the NFL possibilities that are out there, and we certainly hope those work out. What about Hopefully. Uh, academically and as far as your major and what are you looking for? Um, I'm about 30 hours short of my degree right now, and uh, with another year left, that you know should be easy to get. And uh, I've really had you know all the opportunities in the world here, and uh, I've enjoyed it and look forward to next year. We look forward to next year, too, and whatever Bubba Miller decides to do, John, he will do exceptionally well. An outstanding credit to uh, Middle Tennessee, and believe me, whenever anybody makes a talk in uh, Nashville, they always ask about Bubba Miller. That's the first name that comes up. We better say hi to his mother while we're talking here, too. She's a great lady. So it will be Tennessee and Kentucky coming up, and we'll be talking about that football game with a forward look. Bubba, sit right there. Maybe you can tell us how to do this show, right, okay? Thanks, we'll be back in just a moment. It's time for Fulmer's First Look, brought to you by Magnavox. Smart products for smart people. Magnavox. Smart. Very smart. 
Tennessee's final home game will be against the Wildcats of Kentucky. So, Coach Philip Fulmer, let's take a look at uh, Kentucky. Kentucky, always a tough football team. They have an outstanding tailback here in Mo Williams. Just uh, you can see him against LSU here, bouncing off a tackle, running it down to the three-yard line. Bubba, as you well know, this, this football team will take an end zone look at the, at the same play against LSU. As you well know, Bubba, they will always play Tennessee tough. An outstanding job here of washing the defense inside, hitting it up there, breaking a tackle and running it down. And we'll have to wrap this guy up better than we did Memphis State's people, certainly. So, Bubba Miller, Never here comes Memphis. Kentucky. Every year, uh, regardless of records, uh, this is their last game, and they'll play us harder than they've played anybody all season. So it'll be the Wildcats and the Volunteers at Dillon Stadium, and we'll have the broadcast of the game on the Vol Radio Network beginning with the kickoff call-in show at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Kickoff at 12.30. And then, of course, next week, we'll join you right here on the Philip Fulmer Show. Till then, for Bubba Miller, for Coach Philip Fulmer, and for your friends at the University of Tennessee, this is John Ward saying so long,